Hey guys, it is a beautiful day out today. The sunshine has finally decided to arrive and hopefully it's here to stay. It is a really, really nice day today. So before I go ahead and get the apps turned on, I did want to answer a question that I've been asked a few times. And that question is, is commercial insurance necessary? Now, of course, before I go into all the details, definitely always do your research. Of course, this is going to vary depending on the apps that you are working how often you work, all those little things. So I always highly suggest for you to do your own research, but I am gonna go over what I have found and what I am doing. So let's start off with Spark. From what I have found, Spark does not offer any type of coverage for drivers. Now your personal insurance that you carry will not cover you for any of these apps if you're in an accident. So that's why I kinda wanna cover that because some people don't realize that until they get in an accident and it's too late then you're stuck with a huge bill out of a car medical bills all that stuff and we definitely don't want that so when I went on to sparks website as well as DDI the question that they had on the website was what kind of auto insurance do I need and the answer that they put for that question was as part of your enrollment with spark driver DDI will specify and collect proof of valid insurance and so I was looking more into it. I can't find anything that they say that they cover us in any way at all. So I'm just gonna say you aren't covered. If they were covering you, they would have it somewhere on their website on DDI or Spark. So there is no coverage for Spark. So if you get in an accident, that is on you. Your personal insurance will not cover it if they find out you're on a delivery with Spark. So if we go to Grubhub, Grubhub does not offer any coverage for drivers either. So again, if you get in an accident, that's all on you. You are not covered by your personal insurance company. Everything will be out of pocket. If you're out of a car, um, you're responsible for the repairs. You're responsible for a new car if it gets totaled out bills, all that stuff. So again, we definitely don't want that. Now, when we get into Uber Eats or Uber Rideshare, I'm just going to touch on Uber Eats because I don't drive for rideshare. So Uber offers some coverage and it states, although Uber maintains commercial auto insurance on your behalf while you're online on the driver app, expanding your personal auto insurance to include rideshare and delivery insurance coverage could help protect you even more. Now, if you go on Uber Eats' website, it goes over all the coverage that they offer. But for them stating this, this is letting me know there's probably some gaps within that coverage. Now, the also the other thing with Uber Eats that many may not know, yes, there's some coverage there, but do be aware if you are in an accident and they're going to cover you for your accident, there is a $2,500 deductible. So that's something to keep in mind. Now off to DoorDash. Now DoorDash states, DoorDash provides auto insurance for dashers, but this insurance applies only to accidents while using a motor vehicle on an active delivery from order acceptance heading to the merchant or from merchant to the customer. This insurance only applies after the dasher goes through their own auto insurance policy first. And then they have a note. It says, note, damages sustained to your vehicle in an auto accident are your responsibility and should be addressed directly by your auto insurance carrier. DoorDash requires all DoorDashers to maintain an up-to-date auto insurance policy. If you fail to maintain your own insurance, DoorDash's coverage may not apply. So there's a lot of little fine details maybe some holes within that. So this gives you a little bit of information whether or not a app may or may not cover you. Now, because I deliver with all four apps, I do have a commercial auto policy through Progressive. It's a peace of mind. Some people will say if I get in an accident, I'm not gonna let my insurance company know, but that isn't something I'm willing to risk. I'd rather have the peace of mind if I was in an accident or say I got in an accident on a delivery and I was knocked 
knocked out and the police come and my apps opened with DoorDash and they see that I'm on a delivery. I am completely out of cost. My insurance company will not cover me if I was just using my personal insurance policy. So having a commercial policy for me is a peace of mind. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm covered when I'm doing deliveries. I'm covered anytime I use my car. So that's definitely a peace of mind. So as mentioned, I did go through Progressive. I've been with Progressive for years and they have always taken care of me. I did shop around but decided to stick with them. I did have a long history with Progressive and they've always taken care of us. So for two vehicles to be under that commercial commercial policy, it cost me $11.26 a day. So for me, again, it's just a peace of mind. Of course, everybody's gonna vary. Maybe you're a part-time driver and you're just driving for Uber Eats and that coverage is sufficient for you. Or maybe you're just part-time with DoorDash and you know that's sufficient for you. It's really going to vary. But I would say if you're driving for quite a few apps, and you're a full timer, I would definitely say for the peace of mind, commercial insurance policy would definitely be worth looking into. Um, but again, this is just my thoughts. This is my research that I kind of found online. Um, so I always suggest to do your own research, talk to your insurance company, see if they can add rideshare coverage onto your policy. That way you have a peace of mind when you're out delivering. If something were to happen, of course, we can't plan out when an accident happens and we all do our best to drive safe when we're out here but if something happens it's just good to have that peace of mind you don't need any more additional stress on top of being in an accident dealing with insurance whether or not you are covered oh and one other thing of course insurance costs is going to definitely vary from person to person state to state everybody's driving records are different and you know states offer different policies depending on areas and stuff you live in so again just check with an insurance provider in your area or your current insurance provider to get an estimate and that way you can go from there. I hope this information helped you guys out and kind of explain how the insurance thing works and, and what I'm doing to make sure that I am covered. So let's go ahead and get these apps turned on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get Spark turned on since we are already at Walmart. I'm sure you guys can tell. I'm gonna go ahead and tap Spark now and we're just gonna say till 10 and uh, hopefully Spark is uh, rolling in today. And then I'm gonna go over to Grubhub, toggle that on to taking offers. Grubhub is on and Uber Eats. I'm gonna hit the go button and we are good to go there. And then of course, a good old DoorDash and there is a dollar peak pay, which is nice. That always helps. I'm gonna go ahead and hit dash now and we'll just say till nine. And then of course, let's do that again, dash now. Oh, it's giving me an error. What happened here? Okay, let me try that again. I don't know what's going on, DoorDash. There we go. Now I have my prompts. I'm like, what is going on? Charge phone, enough gas, red card, hot bags, start dashing. And Uber Eats is bringing us in an offer right now. It is a Walmart, not the kind of Walmart order that I'm looking for, even though I am here. $7.06 for 1.7 miles. I am gonna tap the X on that and um, hold out and see what else we can find. And uh, I will be back at you guys as soon as I get a good one. All right, guys, so I'm hanging out, getting real concerned because I'm in the Walmart parking lot and it is, you know, 20 minutes past the hour, or it was 20 minutes past the hour and no orders coming in. I did end up getting an offer for Spark, but it was no good. Um, I did turn down an Uber Eats, which was $4.79 for 4.1 miles. That was an absolute no. Then they sent me another one. It was a shop and pay, $10.33. Now the $10 is nice, but the miles is not. 12.5 miles. It was one item, but I would have to deliver to another city. Pays lower than the miles, absolutely not. And then I ended up getting the Walmart Spark order that I was mentioning, $9.84 for two orders. 2.7 miles so that was a no-go i held out of course and ended up getting an uber eats order for nine dollars and 46 cents for 5.5 .5 miles it says it's for mr beast 
and I'm wondering if it is a pickup at Red Robin. I think it is. Let me see if it says in the notes. I know Mr. Beast has been popping up all over the place. It does not say. No, it does say. It says Red Robin. Okay. I thought so. <laughs> Anyways, I've been eating my apple and she's telling me to get to go and I've been eating my apple and uh, I'm going to finish this on the road and we are heading to Red Robin to go get this order. We are about nine minutes, 4.3 miles, which tells me that the customer is close by to Red Robin. So we're going to go get their food and get it dropped off. All right, guys. Can I check on an order for Uber Eats? Yeah, what's the name? Let's see, my phone just locked me out. <laughs> CF. CF. Yes. It doesn't look like it's ready quite okay. yet. Are you parked in one of my tickets? Yes, spot? spot one. All right, we'll get it out to you as soon cool. as it's ready. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, so the order is not quite ready. Now with this particular Red Robin, they have their curbside pickup and they don't mind if we call and they'll bring it out. But when I come here, I like to go in and check in because usually it's a little bit quicker if the food's ready that I can grab and go. Um, but it's not ready, so they're gonna bring it out to me when it is ready. So I am gonna mark this order not ready. So I am gonna pull up at the bottom of the app. And what is Grubhub saying? You're not available. I have bad service over here too. <laughs> Um, Grubhub's not happy. They're, they're sending me a message. Anyways, you're going to go ahead and hit details next to the customer's name. And then down at the bottom, you got not ready or you can report an issue. I am just going to tap not ready. It says, thanks. Your feedback helps improve pickups at this location. So I'm going to go ahead and tap got it. And we are going to hang out and hopefully it'll be out sooner than later. They didn't order very much. It is beast style fries. They want seasoned and a Carl's grilled cheese. Sounds pretty simple, but of course, if they're short staffed, it could take a little bit longer. Hopefully it won't. So we're going to hang out and uh, hopefully it'll be out sooner than later. All right, guys. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you too. All right, guys, it's been a little under 10 minutes. Um, yeah, we got the order. We're on our way. I'm going to put this in the hot bag and we are going to head out. So customers, three minutes, 1.3 miles. They are right down the road. I did message them that I'm on my way. And actually yesterday when I delivered a Red Robin order to a customer, the customer actually came out and they watched the channel, which was super, super cool. Uh, meeting somebody that watches the channel that I delivered to. It's like, what a small world, but that was really cool. And it was a red Robin order. So we are going to go get this order dropped off and hopefully catch another one when we get close there. I do have my other apps on, but I have like really funky service right here. And sometimes when I'm leaving this particular location, the map won't register until I get out on to the main road so I have to like kind of remember or hope that I know what direction I'm going into to get um, in the direction of the customer and sometimes I gotta flip around but um, the map was working today thank goodness it was kind of acting funky at first but we are almost there The Red Robin orders dropped off. So when I get to the door, I put the order down and I go to take my photo. My app is completely frozen. I closed out of it, went back into it. I had to hit the go button and the wheel is just spinning and spinning and spinning. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to sit at their front door forever while, and I can hear them in there while my app's like glitching out on me. I just, I, I think the service, cause they're not too far away from Red Robin where I don't get very good service the service just wasn't as strong over here too so i had to drive to the end of the street the customer wanted me to message him once the order was dropped off so i sent them a message after i got some service and then um because i've driven away i hit the you know skip in the top right hand corner i think it is and i put in the notes that um left by front door but i'm like oh my goodness i hate it when that happens doesn't happen too often but it really froze up on me anyways on the way here i did get get a Grubhub offer for 2.9 miles for $9.54 for Sherry. So we are heading there now and uh, hopefully it will be ready when we get there since it is Grubhub and um, they usually take a little bit of time. So I don't have time to drop that off and to drive there. I am three minutes from Sherry. So uh, 
crossing our fingers it's ready and keep these wheels moving. All right, guys. Who are you waiting for? For Carter W. Grubhub. Perfect, thank you. I've got the Grubhub order. It was just a few minutes wait. They were just finishing up, so it was like absolute perfect timing. Customer is six minutes, 2.5 miles, and I did message them that I am on my way, and it is an apartment, of course, um, but I am familiar with these apartments. So I'm probably gonna have to get out because the apartment numbers, you usually got like two walkways to get up to the apartments. The apartment numbers are so small, you cannot see them from your car unless you have some binoculars, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea, but <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Um, I'm gonna get out of the car and, and go look for the apartment, so we should be there shortly, all right. Getting out to check the building number. So this is not the entrance, so I have to go to the other entrance. Right, Grubhub order is dropped off. Like I said, this is that particular apartment complex where you have to get out because the apartment numbers for the building are very, very small and there's like two separate entrances. So you're having to roll the dice and hope you're stopped at the right entrance and your apartment's there. Of course, mine was not. It was at the second entrance. So if you live in an apartment and you get deliveries, it's always good to put some notes if you can. It definitely helps your driver out if um, your apartment numbers are really really small on the building if it was my building I would say if you're facing the building standing facing at the building it would be the far entrance on the right this one had two entrances so there's two entrances it would be the very far right entrance if you're facing the building that would help definitely a lot of course I'm used to it but it's definitely helpful for newer drivers um, you know, if your apartment complex is a lot more complicated to have any kind of detailed notes that you can to help your driver out to get you that order uh, sooner than later. On the way to dropping off that order, I did get a DoorDash order for $8.75 for 4.5 miles. I am heading there now and um, I'm going to keep these wheels moving. I appreciate you guys riding along with me as always and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.